Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And um, today I have going to go back into this story about the uh, the little ones as well as the kingdom rising against kingdom. And uh, But there's a lot more information I need to share with you guys. That's why I'm going to kind of recap a little bit of that and go even much, much deeper. Also, not to mention, I feel like I didn't quite convey it to the, to the depth to where you people could really understand. And so I really feel that it's important that I go back on this and listen. Uh, some people sometimes just comment, and it's obvious they never listen to the entire message. Take the time to really look deeply at this. Uh, this is a very serious, serious subject, and I really am wanting you to grasp what I'm wanting to share here. Uh, also on our Patreon channel, I did upload uh, last night uh, a message there. Actually, it was just a little um, testimonial I did about the fig tree. Uh, and uh, But later today, I'm going into some celestial issues as well as Planet X uh, over on Patreon. So definitely go check that out. Uh, I know a lot of you get knocked off at the end of the month when it goes to a renewal side of that. So, you know, you might want to uh, re-update that because it just, just does that. I don't know how why Patreon does, but it does. Um so anyway, I just wanted to kind of uh, let you guys know that I'll put a link for Patreon in the description below for you. And uh, and as well, I really want to thank you for your support of this ministry. If you if you feel on your heart, you want to support God leads you that way. IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. I'll just put it real quick here on the screen for you. Um, and, and by the way, because of the, so much truth that we put out, we're knocked offline constantly as a result, too. Uh, but anyway, you can also buy our mailing address, which is always right above my head. Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. It's on the website there as well. Uh, you can click and just donate online or, or via mail. And this video right here, um, Doctor Speaks on Harmful Treatments and Wrongful Death, uh, that was 24 hours here on YouTube. It's not up there any longer, uh, but you can still see this on our website or on Odyssey, Giannis channel right here. Um, it's still probably processing, so it's not quite ready there as of yet. Uh, it's got a little different title. I won't say it, but you can see that on your screen. At least I think you can. If not, let me just make that a little bit bigger because I know sometimes that's hard to see. Uh, you can see the uh, what's was spoken about there. This was very important because you need to hear from a doctor exactly what is said on that. Uh, so anyway, won't won't go into that anymore. Um, so at any rate, let's go back here. Let's get started with this message because, like I said, it's very very important message, and I don't want to lose sight of this. So let's get right into it. All the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. That's the Pharisees, right? And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against it uh, is, is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? If I be Beelzebub cast out, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. In other words, their children didn't cast out anybody. And that's what we find out in the Hebrew version of this, the Hebrew Matthew. Uh, it lets you know straight up, they couldn't cast out devils. But, uh, so he said, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his goods. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. This is what was so important. What is that blasphemy of the Holy Ghost? And why is that the unpardonable sin? 
And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoso speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. All right, now, let me really get this out to you. The, the seriousness of, the, of this is it's a bloodline issue is what that is. Israel had fornicated so much with Nephilim bloodlines that they brought about the corruption of the bloodline in Israel. The very thing that when, when Joshua was sent down in the land, you remember the story of Joshua, right? Joshua is sent down there to destroy the inhabitants, the giants. Remember that? Moses tells them they take the ten spies, they go in and they look at that and uh, they come back and only Caleb and Joshua said that we're more than able to conquer them. Of course, the other spies were saying, now the thing is, they come back and they put out an evil report. That didn't mean they weren't telling the truth. Yes, they were giants in the land. And yes, they did look like grasshoppers up next to them. That's how big these guys were. And that's what we're going to get into Patreon too, by the way, friends, are these giants. Uh, I got some very interesting information shared with me. I uh, got an interesting interview as well coming up from the gentleman that shared that with me. Uh, so anyway, and that'll all be over on Patreon, including the interview. Initially, I'll end up making that public, but initially it'll be on Patreon as well. But at any rate there, what I'm trying to get you to understand is we know that Joshua and Caleb, they go out there and they, and they see the giants. And it was the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Canaanites. All these different people were intermingled with fallen angels. Do you remember, what is it, the book of Numbers, I believe it is. Let me just see if I can pull that out real quick for you. I think it's, it's either the book of Numbers or Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 18, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. Talks about Anak. Let's see. No, it's not numbers. Maybe it's Deuteronomy. I, uh, I just do not recall right off the top of my head. Uh, oh, gosh, no, it wasn't there either. Let's see. Let me go here and let me just type in giants. That might bring it up here. Yes, uh 13, all right, that, yeah, there we go. Numbers 13 is where it's at. I apologize. All right, let me, let's go back here. Book of Numbers, and we want chapter 13, right? Yep, right here. The land through which we have passed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, right there, Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came or who come of the Nephilim. Now, it actually doesn't say Nephilim here. This is where these rabbis that uh, didn't know what they were doing, by the way, they were Pharisees that wrote it. Uh, they're the ones that uh, put all these little dashes and dots in there for the pronunciation purposes. But when Moses wrote this, Moses wrote, uh, He nun fe yod lamed yod mem. That's Nephilim, all right? The little yod right there is what gives it that E sound in there, Nephilim, fallen ones. But when he says that Anak, B'nai Anak, the sons of Anak, mean Hanafalim, they put the vowel in there as if it is a yod there, but there is no yod there. Why? Because Moses knew good and well that they were from, that he was from one of the fallen ones. Now, I, you take that up with, with God. Moses wrote it, and Moses said that Anak was from a fallen angel. So you want to know how they got here? Well, he tells you right there. That's one of the ways that the sons of Anak were from, that he was from a fallen angel. And you can trace back and see his father's name. That, fa that father's name, he's a fallen angel. Plain and simple. I can't hate to disappoint you, but that's, that's the truth of the matter. All right? So this big issue here about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and everything all comes down to the issue of, um, of this 
whole bloodline issue that we're dealing with. All right. So let me take you, let's continue on. A lot to cover here. A lot to cover. So let me get right into this. All right. Now, Jesus says here, said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now, God, Jesus is telling them straight up, If God was your father, you would love me. All right, let's back up. Let me back up a little bit further on this, right? Um, wow, gee, my natty. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed. He knows that because, but it's a mixed seed. All right. You shall be, uh, excuse me, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. See, that lets you know that's where the, that's where it depends on which way the tree falls. All right. Depends on wh which way the root of the tree goes, because, you know, John said the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So, you know, that tree by the fruit. What line did it come down through? So in a seed of Abraham, yes, technically you could say that. Maybe their mothers were of the seed of Abraham. Doesn't mean their father was. All right. He goes further. He says, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto them, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Wow. Smack right in the face. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. That's important what he says right there. He said, this did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now, Jesus plainly put it, put it out there. They're letting him know. See, they realize he's now saying that they're not from the bloodline of Abraham. And they know that that fornication, this is not a fornication where, wherein, you know, you slept with your neighbor's wife or something and a child comes forth. You know, we're talking about where they slept with a bloodline of fallen angels of Nephilim that is an unpardonable sin. All right. And Jesus has come. You have to understand, Jesus came on this earth for what purpose? To quicken and bring back that which belongs to God. Because here our souls were trapped on this earth, and he's come to bring us back to God, quicken us back to him. And the spirit that is in Jesus Christ, it quickens the soul, it quickens what's within you. It's not making a, a, a physical bloodline. It is that spiritual bloodline that he's come to redeem. All right. Now, <clears throat> but he also goes, this did not Abraham. That's important as well, because he's letting them know that he spoke to Abraham. They not like it, but it's the truth. Remember the three that come down there to Abraham? And Abraham fetches, uh, you know, wants to feed them and everything. And they sit down there under the uh, under the, uh, the, little, the little tree right there. And he tells him he's going to visit that time next year that Sarah was going to have a child. Do you not, <clears throat> you have to understand something. That even itself is so important. Because God was creating a bloodline through Abraham so that Christ, the Messiah, could come. That's why he, he brings this up. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. That really, that irritated him as well, by the way. Because they knew he claimed to be the one that spoke to Abraham and told Abraham the truth. Abraham, you're going to have a child this time next year. Abraham, you know, Abraham actually doubted it. He said, how can I be an old, have pleasure with my, you know, or, or no, I'm sorry, his wife died. She said, how can I be, and she heard it in the tent behind him. She says, how can I be, me being old, have pleasure with my Lord, you know. And and the angel, who's not, you know, he's he, he, she just says it within herself. He said, why did Sarah laugh? 
She come out of the tent. I didn't, I didn't laugh. He said, yes, you did. But he still brought forth the child nonetheless. And that started a royal bloodline coming down. Not mixed with any Nephilim fallen angels or anything. But then Israel goes and mixes up the seed. This is where the sin got started. Okay, so he goes on. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because, wait a minute. He goes, let's see, let me back up verse 42. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Just like in the case of Abraham. He didn't come of his own. God sent him to Abraham. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. All right. Again, as I said, why? Look at this. And there's two scriptures I have now, not just one. You need two to be a witness. Ezra chapter 9. Now when these things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests of the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. Notice that's lands, plural. Okay? Um, let me just find that over here so I can just... Yeah, it's right there. Haratzot. They didn't separate me from the people. Me haratzot. They didn't separate from the people of the lands, plural. Not, not uh, Babylonians. Even the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites. And we know, according to Joshua, those were the very people that were the mixed bloodline. And they had come from Israel. When Israel was taken into captivity, they were also taken into captivity. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been first, first in this faithlessness. So they, they had already done it. All right. Now, Ezra gets them to separate from them. But you got to remember, when... Artaxerxes and, uh, and, and um, let's see, what do you have as well? You had, uh, you had the different kings there in, in Babylon that felt to send back the children of Israel back to their homeland. And not just the children of Israel, uh, the, Cyrus, the, 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 what is it? the Cyrus scroll. I actually have seen that. Uh, that cylinder, the Cyrus cylinder, where Cyrus sends back, makes a decree that he's going to free all the people that they took into captivity, not just the Israelites, all the peoples. So they all went back to the lands. So when people try to tell you, oh, but Israel did, they separated from their wives and from their children and everything, but you forget it wasn't, that didn't matter because they came back to the land of Israel anyway, because that's where they were living before they were taken into captivity. And of course, Cyrus sends them all back home. Voila, still a problem then. Isaiah also brought this out. O house of Jacob, come you and let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, for they are replenished from the east and with soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the brood of aliens. <laughs> that was Babylon. They are replenished from the east. In other words, your numbers had dwindled, so you ended up and you had a bunch of uh, sexual relations with the Philistines. And they please themselves in the brood of aliens. In other words, in their children that are not of Israel. They were no longer a pure bloodline. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Oh yeah, they got plenty of that. But even... Even the prophet Isaiah, and that's in chapter 2, 
And this, this is what's funny, right? This is where the law of the Lord is going to go out of Zion, out of Jerusalem. The very scripture that's so famously quoted as Israel is supposed to be the ones that uh, deliver the law unto the people, right? The only thing they know is the Talmud. And the Bible tells you that. Flat out tells you that. And I think I have that scripture up here. And we're going to get into it. All right. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That's Jesus talking to the Pharisees again. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with the blood of the prophets. Excuse me, with them in the blood of the prophets. Because you know all the prophets, every righteous prophet there ever was, was killed by, by Jewish people. Wherefore, Jesus says here, wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves, that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill up the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? That lets you know these fallen angels are reptilian. And did he not say that, that all the righteous blood shed going all the way back to Cain and Abel? And we know that's where the serpent first appears, biblically. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Archias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Mm -mm. Now you notice where Jesus gives them that last chance. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, O oh, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto you. How often I would have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Is he talking about the temple or their physical being? It could be either way. Because we do know he prophesies, not one stone will be left there upon another that won't be thrown down. Right? Let's move on. <clears throat> And I've got myself some notes, so don't forget some things there. But let's just see here. We are in now Zechariah. Um, and I am going back. Let's see here. Did I get? Uh, okay, here. Yeah, I actually made my notes going forward. This is the prophecy in the book of Zechariah chapter 13. And I'm bringing this up because if you recall, one of the key important scriptures, let me see if I've got it here. Maybe it's a different place. I think, no, actually we want Matthew 12, I believe, or Matthew 10. That's Matthew 23. Uh, actually, we probably should go to Matthew 10 first, or Matthew 18. Now, going back, we're going to recap a little bit. Did I put, yeah. If you remember, I, I shared with you. Oh, that's important too, by the way. Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's where we are now, the gospel of the kingdom. The true gospel of the kingdom. Because why? Nation shall rise against nation. Goy against goy. Because most people today are Gentiles, believe, are 
professing to be believers, and they're rising up against one another. The evangelical Zionists rise up against regular evangelicals, and in uh, and, and, and every faith you can imagine, they're all warring against one another. Who's got the truth? And kingdom against kingdom... That's because the Pharisees are pushing to come back into power. They believe that the scripture of Isaiah chapter 2 has never been fulfilled through Jesus. So they are trying to fulfill that. And of course, the nation against nation, that's because part of those goys out there, the, the evangelical Zionists, like you know so many that we could name that I'm not going to name at this point. I've named them many other times. Uh, they are out there trying to tell you that the kingdom of the Pharisees is the one that you ought to support. All you have to do is look who they stand with. Look at the ministers, whether they want to claim themselves Zionist or not. Look at these ministers that stand there with all these different rabbinical, or not rabbinical, we'll just say modern day men in black. As you already know who those are, the men in black out there, they're standing there with them. They go out, have them on the interviews and everything else, and they glorify the Pharisees, the men in black. Especially, what's really sad is most of the ones they're glorifying are Chabad Pharisees. Even the night honor Israel that, uh, that is put together by the Kufi, as they call it, organization, uh, by John Hagee, uh, almost every orthodox organization he works with is Chabad. Yeah, Pharisees, men in black, one and the same, no different. And that just so suits so well, men in black, because truly you're dealing with a Pharisaic bloodline, their own testimony is they cannot be rabbis in that group unless they can trace their lineage to the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. Nehemiah Gordon has told us this. So we have him as a witness. That doesn't mean that all Pharisees are a bloodline of Nephilim. But there was a lot of them that were. And the easy way to know is whether or not they can hear the word of God or not. That might ring true even amongst the nations, the goy. Can you hear the word of God? So the kingdom is against kingdom. The Pharisaic kingdom is against the true kingdom, which is the kingdom that Christ came to put in place, which also consists of Gentiles. That's why you have nation against nation too here. Well, that's just really just a fight of them own. I don't even think any of them have got it together, period. But this kingdom against kingdom... If you remember, Jesus said he was going to take from uh, the Pharisees. He was ripping the kingdom from them and giving it to a king, uh, to a to a nation, a nation, not a kingdom that bears that brings forth fruit thereof. So part of that goy got brought in under the part of the kingdom there. Hmm, interesting. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations of, for my name's sake. So the ones that really stand for Jesus Christ, the goy, the nations there, the goy, that's, that's those, <laughs> you're hated by the Christians that, that claim, that, that, that claim to be, followers of Christ, but they're the ones that hate you for the very sake of the name of Jesus Christ. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Let you know again, they are Christians of today. False prophets. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hmm. But he that shall endure to the end, the shame shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all the goy. Then shall the end come. Those messages for both Jew and Gentile. All right. So this is why I said we had to we have to recap a little bit to know that this is what we're dealing with, this kingdom against kingdom, right? So let me make sure that where we're at, we're coming back over here to, we just left Matthew 23, we went into Matthew 18, 
And now we're going to go into this, this issue here now, okay? And the same time came the disciples and Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That's what brought us in there, the kingdom. Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted as and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such chi little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, Notice there's a, a prerequisite, which believe in me. It were better for him a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now Jesus says that, and he's speaking now about the little ones that believe in him because they're going to do some pretty bad evils to the little ones in the last days. But he's letting them know you'd be better off just being having the millstone wrapped at your neck and throw you in the bottom of the ocean than for you to offend one of them. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe unto that man by whom the offense cometh. One man is going to start that offense. One man. Zechariah goes on and he also mentions this and a lot of people never even pay attention to what he says. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds between thy hands? Talking about Jesus. Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. This is after the resurrection. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is near unto me says the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. You remember Jesus quoting this? The sheep would be scattered. This was after the resurrection. This was when he was being crucified and they, they, the, the disciples all fled. I will turn my hand upon the little ones. In the Egyptian writings, and I don't count them as biblical, but they actually mention about these little ones. Literally, they're coming in the latter days. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Now that's important right there because that is them receiving the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus said to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. It won't be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Why? They are the true seed of Almighty God. And to speak against that, them, there's no pardoning. In other words, when I say speak against them, to call them. Because you got to remember, what did they say about Jesus back way back over here, right? They were saying of Jesus, they said that he had a devil, that he worked for the prince of the devils. They go on even to say that he was a Samaritan. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Don't stop watching, friends. It's fixing to get very interesting. We're just getting started. Don't, please don't stop. If you have to take a break, take a break. Come back and hear everything I'm going to tell you. It's going to really connect. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment. That idle word is that word that you say, that you sit there and call true believers a bunch of devils. 
when you call, call the true believer like they did with Jesus, that you're Beelzebub. For by your words shall you be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. And that word hangs everything around those that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the ones that are truly filled with the Holy Spirit, truly, that royal seed of Christ, to call them Beelzebub, there's no pardoning for that. Okay, Going down further, Um, I'm actually looking for the part where, where, um, where they said about Jesus. I know I've got it up here somewhere that, uh, did not we say unto you that he was a Samaritan? Uh, I may, let's see, let me just see. No, no, it's not in Matthew 23. Maybe it was over here. Let me just see. It's further down in the chapter. I know that wherever it's at. I don't have it. I've got it somewhere up here. We'll get to it. We'll come back to it, though. Let's see. So we were in, I think we were in Zechariah. Yeah, Zechariah. Now, let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 10. Um, all right. We'll, we'll come back to that. Let's get into the here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. That's so, so important. He that receiveth me, see, he that receives you receives me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. That's limited. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Now, granted, you can look at that two ways because he's actually, he's capitalizing on verse 40. He receiveth, you receiveth me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. But I'm going to look at that in the carnal side of it, going back to the prophets in the book of Kings in a moment. Whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones, wow, we're coming back to the little ones again, a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall by no wise lose his reward. Hmm. Why does he say in the name of a disciple? Because it would be through the disciples as they go, as the time goes down, that the that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit moves on. Remember the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2? The disciples all got filled with the Holy Spirit. Then the house of Israel in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, when they said, you know, Peter said, men and, oh, you house of Israel, the very same, the, the, you know, this is, this is what was spoken was going to happen. Then they wanted to know how could they receive the Holy Spirit. He told them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were baptized. 3,000 of them, they were first converts. Okay. Let's go to 1 Kings. Now, the reason I'm bringing up 1 Kings is because he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, but it gets deeper than just receiving the prophet. This is, a, this is about Elijah and the little woman during the famine. Remember, Elijah called for a famine in the land. There wouldn't be rain for three and a half years, only at his word. And he comes that little woman. Remember, even Jesus speaks about her. He says that, you know, that there was there were many widows in the land, but Elijah only went to one. That ought to tell you something. And she said, as, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Famine was so bad as the last meal they were going to have. That's so interesting. You know, the two sticks represents the cross. 
And it's like communion, the last meal. And then they know where they were going. They were dying. Jesus also, when those sticks were brought together, knew communion was his last meal. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as you have said. But make me therefore a little cake first and bring it forth unto me. And afterward make for you and for your son. This is fascinating to me. It's broke up in three parts. First make it for him. Why? Because the gospel is to the Jew first. Then to the Gentile. Her son represented a Gentile. You didn't know that, did you? Her son's a Gentile. But we know by what's written here, he's not a Nephilim Gentile, but he is a Gentile. I'm going to show you how you know that in a moment. Afterward, make for you. See, he's showing you the order in which Christ came with the gospel. Because the gospel came to the Jews first. She also represented that. And thy son. And he represented Samaritan. Half Jew, half Gentile. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the, the jar of meal shall not be spent, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the land. Okay. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She and, and he and her house did eat many days. The jar of meal was not spent, neither did the cruise of all fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And that represented, and that's, by the way, that's only a carnal thing. It did come to an end. But the difference with Christ is when you receive him and you partake of his body, the bread and the oil that he gives is the Holy Ghost. It's eternal. You can never die. You take up your cross. For he that loseth his life shall gain it. And it came to pass that as these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that he was has no breath left in him. And he said unto Elijah, What have I to do with you? And thou man of God, are you come unto me to bring my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Now she confesses her son was born outside of the children of Israel. Isn't that amazing? And he said unto her, Give me thy son, and took him out of the bosom, and carried him up into the upper chamber, where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, has, have you also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? You know, I first heard this story when I was 11 years old. I was in the Boy Scouts and I uh, volunteered to do this. Uh, we didn't have CPR in those days. It was before CPR came out, but it was still a form of CPR that we learned. Uh, you didn't do the chest compressions. You'd hit the heck out of the guy and then breathe in their mouth. But I never forget the, the instructor quoted from Elijah when he sneezes on him three times. He said it was the first order of CPR ever done, which he didn't call the word CPR. Um, he said the first order of mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation ever done was done by Elijah. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily that way, but nonetheless, though, I have never forgotten this story my entire life since I was 11 years old because of that event. He stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back into him. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back into him, and he revived. Now, what's interesting here, what did it say here in Matthew? Jesus said, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. In the case of the carnal side, Elijah 
the being a friend, you, she received him as a prophet. She received a prophet's reward. He revived the child, but the child would die again. But when you receive Jesus Christ as a prophet, and he breathes upon you, Remember when he breathed upon his apostles and he said, Receive ye the gift, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost in John chapter 8. I think I've got that up here somewhere. Let me find it real quick right here. Uh, that's John chapter 4. Oh my gosh. You, you guys know it though. He, he breathed on them. Maybe it wasn't even John chapter 8. No, I know it's not in John chapter 8. I think it's John chapter 20 is where it's at. He said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. They received it, but they received it on the day of Pentecost is when they received it. But like Elijah, he breathed on them. And you can't lose it when he breathes it on you. And that's the other side of this part here with Matthew. Right? He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the prophet's reward. Christ Jesus, the prophet, the reward that he gives is eternal life. Elijah could only do it for a temporal thing for this woman. And it's also a type of the gospel going to the Gentiles. The first one, Cornelius, received the Holy Spirit from Peter. Because if you receive the righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Cornelius had got, the righteous man was Peter. And when Peter went down there, he received the righteous man's reward. The spirit of almighty God gave the Holy Spirit. Mm. But that's what it was. But also the fact of her son. But when we go to Revelation 18. See, she says here in 1 Kings, she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with you, O thou man of God? You have come unto me to bring my sin into remembrance. She felt bad for what she had done, but see, she had not. See, there's one thing, and that's another thing you'll that, that I found also in the... Um, in these Egyptian writings, the true fornication is to lie with a species that is not your own. That's why when Israel, if a man humbled a damsel, he, he slept with her and, and, and she got pregnant. So long as he marries her, there's no there would be no sin committed. She's a widow. She married the man that she did this with. But no doubt, it was before they got married and she felt like that God was remembering her sin because he was not of the Jewish nation. That's why she considered it a sin still. But he no doubt was not a bad man. He wasn't a Nephilim, obviously. Now I realize that that's a conjecture. You have to just kind of follow with me on that. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. What are we dealing? We're dealing with Babylon. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power and earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils. He's not talking about the city. He's talking about the people. And the hold of every foul spirit and cage of un every unclean and hateful bird. What is the cage? The human body had become that cage. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Her sin is fornication. And all the going, all the nations... And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich to her, the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. 
That's a direct warning to you ministers that are spreading your lies and convincing your followers to support Netanyahu's Zionistic regime. You want to support Jewish people? Yes, that's okay. Nothing wrong. You care about the Jewish people, care about the Palestinians too then. 50% of them are crypto-Jewish. In fact, they're probably more Jewish than most of the ones that are claiming to be Jewish in that land right now. Stand with both sides, why don't you? Don't put a division in the conflict. You know, oh, the Pal and, not, and not to mention how many Palestinian Christians are there. Do you care about them at all? They're oppressed like never before. And Israel, you as Jewish people in the land of Israel right now, don't you know God said don't oppress the people that live among you? If you don't see Jesus Christ, can you not believe that Moses told you not to do it? You do it anyway. Not all of you. Many of you would not oppress Palestinians. Many of you have Palestinian friends. You love Palestinian people. Would do anything in the world for them. I know that for a fact. I lived in Israel. I know how that is. But many of you also look down your nose at them too as if there's something less because why? Talmudic teaching has taught you they're less. After all, they're not you. But God says, a, our voice came out of heaven. Didn't say God, just said a voice came out of heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. You're in that day right now. You have an opportunity, those of you, that have joined yourselves up to those movements. I don't care if they're Jewish teachers claiming the praises of Israel. They're going against the word of God. For her sins have reached into heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Yes, he remembered her iniquities. But the woman over here that Elijah came to, she was fearful that God had remembered her sin and brought forth a son, and that God had taken this child's life. But the mere fact that God raised that child from the dead shows that God had forgiven her of her iniquity. But when it comes to this one here, and we're talking about 2,000, 3,000 years later, whatever the case is, from the time of Ezra, as we know, the sin here that we speak of in Ezra 9, as well as in Isaiah chapter 2, where he clearly tells you that they, for they replenished from the east. Yeah, you got your kids back. And with soothsayers, like the Philistines, like the Philistines. In other words, just one of the groups. Perzites, Ammonites, Amalekites. Yeah, Ezra named them all for you. And they please themselves. in the brood, in other words, Uve Yeladai, Nechrim. You pleased yourself and the children. You were so happy with these children you got from aliens. Did you hear that? Aliens. Get back over here where we were at. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. She claims to be married to Yahweh. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. People are in shock. They're in shock. Nobody be in shock 
something happened to America. Everybody won't say America is Babylon. America is Babylon. You think they'd be in shock? All the nations we've destroyed and burned down to the ground and everything all over the world, conquered the world. Do you think people would be shocked over that? No, but to see that with Israel, yeah, they're going to be shocked. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment has come. All right? I'm just highlighting that for you. Let's move on. All right. Matthew 10, 26. Let's start with verse 25. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known, O Israel. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. That's what I'm doing. What you hear in the ear, that preach you upon the housetops. That's what I'm doing. Maybe I should have gone on the top of the house and made the message from there. But the point is, is so that the message goes far and wide. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, too, this is where they say that he was Beelzebub. Let's see here. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loses his life shall lose it. Let's see. Uh, no, that's not it. Hang on. Oh, we are going to go down to that, though. Let me just see here. Okay. I do want to go down to the verse down here, though. He that findeth this life shall lose it, and he that loses it, his life for my sake shall find it. He that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. Remember, I, we just read all this just a moment ago, right? About the prophet and the reward and everything. This is what I want to focus on now in verse 42. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones. There comes those little ones again. A cup of cold water. Only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall no, no wise lose his reward. You want to know what that water is? It's not what you think. It's not a glass of water. Let's look at what it really is. John chapter 4. I told you there was a lot more we're going to go into on this. Jesus, this is where Jesus goes. He, he, he tells him he had to go to Samaria. Then come he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. See, Joseph types Christ. So that ground belonged to Christ as well. He did tell his apostles not to go even into the way of the Samaritans. Only into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he had that right to go there. Why? Because it was given to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Hmm. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well. And was about the sixth hour. That hour is so important because you remember Jesus during from the sixth to the ninth hour. Darkness set in on the land. In the ninth hour though he gave up. The ghost. He gave up his spirit. He had to do it because if he didn't do it, that spirit would never come back upon us and would never. And by the way, that's what's so important. If you don't get anything else, the little ones, if you're a, one of those little ones, that's because his spirit has come upon you in a union, a spiritual union that has germinated and brought, see, your soul was in your body, but until that spirit of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and germinates that seed that is in you, you cannot come forth to life. You cannot put forth the fruits thereof. But when you do, and it does quicken you, you become one with Almighty God. You become a true child of God. That's why he says, if you make fun, if you, if you speak up against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven in this world or the world to come because it's the Holy Spirit that quickens that child unlike where the Jewish 
or the, or the Pharisees of years ago went and slept with those those women and their their and the and the men. It was by, by both ways. They they slept with the women there, and then of course women got the men there, and they were nephilim, and they were bloodlines of demonic entities. That's why. And they made they said, Jesus, you're the you're the devil. You're the devil, not us. You are, you are. See, it was a big issue over who was the righteous bloodline. And Jesus said, You can say that about me, it's okay. But when the Holy Spirit's come and then he quickens them and they like me, they become filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, I'll forgive you for that. But when you go to when you go to condemning that bloodline, you're in trouble, buddy. And I don't care if it's this world or even in the world to come, you're going to face judgment for that one. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. We'll go jump down. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, or which is a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me to drink. Notice the gift of God. The gift of God is the Holy Spirit. You would have asked him and he would give you living water. There's that water. There's that give that water. See? Whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones. Now that's just a type cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple but that's the that's the that's the clincher right there in the name of a disciple one of the disciples that had received the holy spirit's what he's talking about barely i said you shall no wise lose his reward hmm getting 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 amazing here back over here to john again You would have asked him, he would have given you living water. Woman said to them, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then have you this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob that gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoso drinketh of this water shall thirst again. There's your carnal side. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. We already know this story. She goes, she gets her husband, come, you know, or no, she, or he tells her to go get her husband. She says, and got one. He says, you've had five. The one you're living with now is not yours either. Right? Had all these things going on. He said, you've had five. You, you know, you told the truth. Then she perceived him to be a prophet, right? Now, get on down. Jesus says, but the hour comes, and now he is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. See, your worship to the Father is not even complete without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need that to be able to quicken that. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Woman said to him, I know that the Messiah comes when he, which is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I that speak unto you am he. He doesn't even say the word he, just speaketh unto you am. That's like the I am again. Then, she dropped her pot, runs, and tells everybody about it. I guarantee you, when he was crucified, I believe she was there that day. I believe she witnessed his side being pierced and the blood and the water coming out of his side, separated no less, showing that he was that well of water. I believe she was there on the day of Pentecost. She may have been the part of the House of Israel side, because she was a Samaritan, but nonetheless, she received the Holy Spirit, no doubt about it. Let me kind of hurry because I know it's getting lengthy here. Ah, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
This is why I say, you ministers that are supporting Pharisees of today, when all they have to offer you is Talmudic teachings, oh, you say, well, they know the Bible so well, they can tell us all about Jesus. Yeah, they're telling you to give you nut, get you away from Jesus. But anyway, this is what Jesus said about them, and you still follow them anyway. This people draws nigh to me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of his mouth defiles a man. Then came his disciples and said, Know you not that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Now, there was a whole lot of planting going on during Babylonian times, and it wasn't of God's planting at all. That was them mixing that seed. Let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So I guess if you're going to keep on supporting them ministers out there that are claiming to be Christians, you're just one of the blind and you're going to fall right into the ditch because Jesus said they are leaders. They are blind leaders of the blind. And the ones they lead are blind. And you're going to end up falling right into the ditch because you're following them, claiming that they have something to teach. Remember that one Yana did recently, that message about uh, that, that uh, woman preacher, I forget her name, down in Florida there. Yeah, there you go. She said she had to go over there and learn from the Pharisees, the, the rabbis. The blind was teaching the blind, and now they're going to all fall in the ditch. Mm. Isaiah quotes it. Here it comes from. Um... For as much as this people draws nigh with, with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment of men learned by rote. You want to you know what that word rote is? So many of you that are caught up into this law issue and stuff get caught up into this as well. All right, here it goes right here. He says, all right, the fear of them... Irotamoti mitzvot anashim. The mitzvot of men. And I'll tell you something. If you, I mean, look, I was involved in that group, the Chabad group, for many, 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 many years. Doing the mitzvot. You got to do the mitzvot. And it's good deeds is what it is, you know, it's, but it's still the mitzvot are the commandments that the rabbis have given to the people. Oh, but don't worry for you as Gentiles, you don't have to do 663 mitzvot. You only have to do seven mitzvot. But of course, we got a bunch of sub laws, about a hundred of those and more mitzvot that you get to do as well. So we'll say 107 mitzvot that you're going to get to do. And if you don't do those mitzvot because you're a Gentile, off with your head. There you go. Therefore, behold, I will again do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the prudence of their prudent men shall be hid. That was Christ when he came. But they haven't stopped their little teachings, have they? Hmm. Matthew 21, they say unto him, he will be miserably destroyed, those wicked men, and I will let up. This is where Jesus gives the parable about the vineyard, right? Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. And this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. The Pharisees, you've lost it. It was already taken from you. And you ministers that are out there supporting them, Jesus already told you it was taken from them. It was given over to a nation that would bring forth fruits. You're not bringing forth fruits if the only fruit you can do is go pluck it from a tree that's dead. Why? 
Why do you think it's said to offend one of the least of his little ones? It would be better that a millstone was tied at your neck and you were cast to the depth of the sea. He said it would be better if that were happened to you. Because when the judgment comes in this day, in Revelation 18, the angel said that a, that a millstone, well, we'll go into that in just a moment. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. That was because they rejected the cornerstone, which was Christ Jesus. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. He's talking about Revelation. Well, that we are in Revelation 18. I believe that's, no, I'm sorry, we're in Matthew 21 still, sorry. And... Let's see, by the way, that was also for parables. Yeah. He who falls upon this stone will be cast down, but he who falls upon it will be broken apart. That's just, it, I didn't really need that in there. So let me just pop that out. When you get to, let's see. Let me just, uh, Revel, was it Revelation 18? Where was that at? Yeah, it's over here. The rewarder, even as she rewarded you, even double into her according to her works, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, give me one second because I thought I had this up there, but I don't. Let's see what we have here. Maybe it's one word. Yeah, it's verse 22. That's what it was. Verse 22. I just didn't get down far enough. Here we go. Rejoice over her, you heaven, you holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now, not a millstone is thrown on her, but with violence she'll be brought down that way. That's why Jesus said, if you offended one of the least of his little ones, you would have been better that the millstone was hung around your neck and you were thrown in the depth of the sea. It'd be a heck of a lot better for you to drown with that on your neck than what's going to happen. All right. That's why in Matthew he talks about, um, um, I kind of lost the place way back over here, Matthew, where he says, whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but whomsoever it shall fall, it will be ground to powder. It's the judgment of Christ that's coming. All right, let's get ready. We're closing up now. This is what happened. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. That's why we have the nation against nation over in Matthew 24. There, the tares got sowed in amongst us. That's why you have, if you notice, and I'll just see if I can, I'll just bring this out real quick in the book of Jude. Um, what did Jude tell us? He said they crept in among us because they were not of us, right? Remember that? Um, For there are certain men crept in and unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The only condemnation that were of old are Nephilim bloodlines. And they crept in among us. How did they do it? How did they do it? Because just what Jesus said here. He said it was going to happen, but while men slept, his enemies came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But they were commanded to leave him alone. Would we then go gather them up? He said, no. That's why you gather up the tares. You root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together into the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my, into my barn. So we're about to see that, that gather. And by the way, the gathering is already happening. They're gathering together. They're making their side. Which also find it kind of interesting. Isn't it interesting how many of them say 
you know, for safety. When things are getting really bad, go to Israel. Think about that for a moment, right? Think about it. So nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, right? Be dropping down to verse 12. Because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. We're coming down to that end now, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget Patreon later today. Got another message to load on there. Israeli News Live. The link will be in the description below. Also, right now, the only place you'll be able to, well, you can see it on our website. Also on iConnect, this particular message right here. Um, and I think that will better help you from the doctor's perspective.